from the file and I saved my file to the experiments folder but you could very easily put it in my documents or on your desktop in a folder and that would be just as easy to find. Remember this is just one data file you'll have several of them to save. And then what we have to do is we have to try to find where in the data we want to start. Now this region that's at the top we really don't want to use. That's just me running to make sure I've got some decent data coming in. This is where the injection happens and the dilution of the solution occurs. This is probably or this is probably the first data point. So if I begin to highlight here what the program does on the left hand side if you notice is it shows you which data points it's selecting. So now these I'm going to click over here and drag down. I don't want to collect all the data because down here the this amount of signal that we have is so low that it's going to introduce too much noise. So I'll just use the data in the region which seems to be most useful. And I'm just going to copy that. Next thing I'll do is open up an Excel file. and paste that data in. I think I want to paste it down in here because I'm going to want to put some headers on top of my data. This is time. We're going to have to fix that because we don't want to start our analysis at time is equal to 34. I mean you really can but it's really more traditional to start with time is zero. This is absorbance. Now absorbance is not concentration and so what we're going to have to do is correct that to be concentration. I'm just typing the headers in using the cursor keys to move over. Natural log of concentration and 1 over concentration. If you remember, this is a zero order plot, a first order plot, and a second order plot. And I just put those up there to help remind you. I'm going to neaten this up a little bit. And now what we have to do is convert absorbance to concentration. Now if you remember that absorbance is equal to E B C that's how it's often done. Um, C is the concentration. E B is actually equal to 1 times 10 Actually, 1.3 times 10 to the 6th. So, what you can do then is say concentration is equal to, that's just the equal key off the keyboard, absorbance, and you notice how I, I move the cursor to the left by using the keyboard, divided by 1.3e. Now that's the molarity of the dye. I want the natural log of that, so it's going to be the equal to ln and then close parenthesis. And I also want 1 divided by, so equal to 1 divided by the concentration. Now, it, rather than typing all that in over and over and over again, I'm going to highlight these three boxes. Grab the little corner, the little black dot at the corner, and drag it down. And now that formula has been pasted over, and they all reference these cells over here. Now, the other bit that I have to do is I have to change the time. Now, my starts at 34, but I really want it to start at 0. And the next time is actually 2 seconds in my analysis. So I put 0 and 2. I highlight that. I grab the corner and I drag it down. It automatically fills those in. Finally, I need to make a graph. And I find the easiest way to do this, actually, is you're going to make a number of graphs, is to highlight all the data. Go insert, and we're going to do a scatter plot. You notice there's a bunch of data in there. And you'll notice each one, series 1, 2, 3, and 4. Those are the columns 1, 2, 3, and 4. I'm going to get rid of series 4. I'm 
then I'm going to get rid of series two. Oops. Then we get rid of series three. And there's your concentration versus time graph. Next thing you want to do is format. There's a bunch of quick layouts, and actually some of these are pretty good for this kind of stuff. But uh, we're going to choose, so oh, let's say this one. Don't need that. I'll get rid of that. And over here, what we're going to do is type concentration. And it's in units of, or sorry, absorbance. So this is absorbance of FDC, um, FDC number one versus time. Bottom axis is time. Oops, I mean to double click that. I just hit enter to activate that time in seconds. So there's the first graph. That's those two over there. Now we'll make another graph. I'm just going to go through the same thing again. I want these. I could also have it choose the headers automatically. I'm going to insert, scatter. You get rid of this um, top graph that's series two. And now it's in units of concentration. And you notice how funny those look. So what I'm going to do is double click on this and I'm going to change the number type to scientific. I want two decimal places, maybe even one decimal place and close that. And that looks a little bit better. The time is okay and now what we're going to do is do a quick layout. Probably to be consistent use the same kind of layout. Concentration I think I typed that right. In molarity units. And over here, what we're going to do is again is say time in seconds. And then delete the series and give it a chart title like concentration versus time. Or you can even call it first order graph if you like. So there's another graph. And then we're going to do the third graph, the LN of concentration. We're going to insert, scatter plot. And again, we're going to get rid of these guys. Oops, double clicked by accident. And you notice, wow, that's a really nice graph. I'm going to delete that. And then we're going to do chart tools. We're going to do layout or uh, design, sorry, quick layout. And then you can fill in the, the information that you need here. And I'm not going to do that, but next thing we want to do is actually do a linear regression. So, you know, we did this in class on your calculator, but if you right click on a data point, you're going to see a dialog that opens up that says add trend line. That was a right click. We want this to be a linear trend line. We want the equation on the chart, and we want to do R squared. And there is my trend line with the R value. And I don't really need a legend, but that is the equation for the line. This value that I'm highlighting here with my cursor is actually the rate constant for this particular reaction. So there you go. That's how you do it. I'll leave the second order chart entirely up to you. And you compare the first order and second order charts uh, to each other in your report.